right, it's the eve of the big game. Now, Bills fans, they're going to be without Micah Hyde for the season. That's rough. Still a talented team. This is not going to like derail them or anything, but that's a tough loss. This is a big game for so many reasons. If the Bills win, they are iron fisting the AFC East. And it's a big morale boost for them considering how injured they are. Dolphins, if they win, stadium's going to explode. Dolphin fans are going to be out of their mind. Now, If the Bills lose, they got a home game down the road against us. They're getting a lot of players back. And I don't think it really is a diminishing too much on him because home games are supposed to be won by the home team. It's going to hurt a little bit, especially if the Dolphins somehow win and then keep on winning. It's going to put a lot of pressure. But again, we we have to go to Buffalo. So I think it reduces some of the impact of the Bills if they lose that negative feeling. Now, the Dolphins, I still think they can lose. If that offense scores and makes this an offensive shootout and they lose by three, I still think it's a massive positive. If we win, of course, it's insane positive. But we have to score. I would feel even defeated in a sense if we want a low scoring game. This is our opportunity to make this offense just put on a show with all those injuries being at home, all the investments, it's going to take the offense. Now the defense, I'm very I don't I personally don't think it's gonna be a low scoring game. I don't see any way. We we have never been able to stop Allen. I mean last year in Buffalo we were able to limit him early. But you can't stop the guy. It's going to be a 20-something game at least. You know? And our defense is not running at its highest level yet. And Howard is really injured. He is. And it's going to come down to this offense with all the investment to carry this team and this show. Because if we put enough points on, we win. And all that defense really needs to do is get a stop or a pick if this offense is humming like it's supposed to. Now, everybody is going to tell you, if we win, two is the greatest quarterback of all time. And if we lose, two is not as good as he was last week. It was a fluke. That's not the case. It's about pressure. And that's what this podcast is going to be about. I'm going to show you the film from the Ravens game and show you what was going on with Tua as far as pressure and how it was being played with the Ravens. Ravens were playing a lot of over zone. They were rushing very few rushes mostly. And that happened more and more as the game progressed. And there was still pressure. And I'm going to show you, the old days, it would say, if a lineman's name's called, it's bad news. Just better, uh, better not seen and heard, or whatever the deal is. I can't remember what the deal is. But if you're calling a lineman's name out, for the most part, it's bad news. Sometimes a pancake block or something like that. But for the most part, the name that gets called out is the guy that's messing up. So I'm going to go through this. It's not every play, but it's just about every relevant play. And you'll hear the names called out throughout the course of the game, and you'll know what the weak link is. And with the offensive line, that weak link is is the link that's going to make or break the offensive line, the offense, and the quarterback. So, before I get into that, I want to give a shout-out to you guys for stopping by. Thank you so much. It's been a long week of coverage. I'm I'm tired, (laughs) and I'm excited. So, I thank you for all all of you guys coming by, the likes, the subscribes, the comments especially, the views, the whole nine yards. Bills fans... Finns fans and all y'all fans have a great day tomorrow. It's, it's football and it's gonna be it's gonna be about fun. So thank you for stopping by. Have a great day tomorrow. But I also want to give a shout out to Ace Perhead, my sponsor, because without you guys, without football and without them, this show ain't going down. Ace Perhead's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. 
Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right. I'm not going to get into a whole deal here. I told you what I'm going to do. I'm going to point out some good stuff that Tua did, and we'll show you mostly who screwed up. And you'll see the names, and then you take those names into the Bills game, and then watch those names. If you don't hear those names getting called, or you don't see those players making mistakes, it's probably going to be a good day. Now, we don't know about Tehran. My man, Tehran... I mean, Tehran, he might not play, didn't practice all week, and it's a concern that toe could be a long-term problem because if he plays today or tomorrow, it could exasperate even further. So I don't know if he's playing tomorrow, and if he's playing tomorrow, he's going to be injured, he's going to have Vaughn over him, and it could also derail him going forward. But we'll see what happens. If Tehran does not play, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be extraordinarily difficult for us to win, especially after you see some of this tape. Now, good news, bad news in this tape. So anyway, let's get to it. Take a look at the tape and see what we see. All right, on this one, zone stretch run. And you can see Smythe getting driven back. Hunt and Little just can't drive their guy deep. It becomes Dolphin offensive lineman sandwich. And there's a lot of people falling, but most of it's got the speed to get to the outside. Nice speed, nice Run there, but you see over here, Eichenberg instead of taking a flat route to get in front of the defender, tries to attack him. He just doesn't have the speed. He ends up making the block at the end of the play. But if he could have got in front of him, this could open a much nicer hole, and it would have allowed Mostert to get up up field a little bit quicker. And at the tail end, Hill misses his block, just can't hold it. So Mostert instead of having one guy in front of him has two. And if he had one, maybe he could have made some more happen. But Hill's great, but he just can't really. He can't really run block. Over here, you'll see Little gets the rip and dip. He's just, this is a feature of his game, a weakness in his game. He just, he can't get in front of the guy. It gets, he leans too much. He's a little slow-footed, and then he gets this. And this you'll see all day. Didn't affect the play, but something you'll see all day. Eichenberg misses the swap a little bit. A little late on a swap. Little get driven back. And my man Tehran even getting driven back. But Tua, he just holds tight. Throws through the window. Really great ball location. Anticipatory throw to throw it out in front of him like that. That's not an easy pass. Little tad bit behind. Almost a great play by the defender. But great catch. Great play by Tua. And you can see over here, you got the play action. And Hunt just really misses that defender inside Pierce. And you get the pressure inside. And that, that, that's a little bit of a factor for the interception. Uh, QB school talked about how Hill should have driven back on the ball as well. And then over here, it's a pitch outside for the zone stretch and Smythe's on the ground, which kind of kills the edge. And you come back and just, just no, there's not, you know, you're not going to get anywhere with this. There's just no numbers on the back end. And over here, Eichenberg gets the thump, holds ground, but gives up late pressure to a hangs tough, throws to a tight window in front of him, and then a tight window of defenders behind him, and what a pass. What a great pass. Then over here, you see Little at the bottom. He gets yo-yoed. He's on, he's, he's leans too far forward. Connor doesn't expect it. He's late to the delivery, but Mostert sees it, eyes it, and picks it up. I don't know if the defender would have got to Tua, but this was a real nice play by Mostert, and then Tua gets the ball off. And you see a little bit of motion by the def the defensive front. Kind of playing show and tell, play action here. And you see a little, little pressure inside, but nothing with the screen play. And you can see Eichenberg and Tehran. It was great dialed up call by McD and great blocks by Tehran and Eichenberg. The valley opens up to the TD. Nice play call. Inside run here, and Eichenberg is just late to the show, and he, he's not going to handle 355-pound Pierce. And then Pierce gets his meat hook on a runner and slows him down, and Tehran just can't hold long enough, and that was that. But really, that, that's, that's on Eichenberg to be there to, to do a better block. 
little play action, and then this is the deal. Pressure on Tua like this. This is what the Patriots did to get him off his game and get the pressure. Smythe misses the block. You know, I like these free runners in here to make test the blocking of the tight ends and to get Tua to have to make early choices and get on a move. This is this is like the recipe to, to take him out. Over here, just a free run. He, I don't think he, – he didn't see him, and it was a long – it was it was third down and long, so – that's what you really got to do it to. And then over here, play action, roll out. And this is another good feature the Patriots used and the Ravens did, but not enough to really shut down those roll out passes, the cheap passes. And you can see Eichenberg just losing quickly inside. I mean, just if Pierce had been faster, this could have been a long day for Tua. Nice dump off by Tua. Good catch and. Pick up by Mostert. Mostert goes to the outside. The outside just totally gets shut down. Eichenberg misses his guy. And then Hunt can't handle his guy. And the back end was just overloaded. But really started with the right side in Eichenberg. See play action here a little at the top. He's getting beat. And you can see inside my man Tehran. He's getting, uh, letting a little too much pressure inside too quickly. But two with that quick release. Gets it out. But the defender makes a great play for the breakup. Again, see Eichenberg missing the block. Connor is quickly there to kind of stole it up a little bit, and Tua lets it rip. Fast release saves him a lot. And you always see over here is just a screw up inside, but it's play action. And then the defender, they've got they got to see you on tape instead of taking that tight inside route. Got to go outside and stop the yo yo to his yo yo, because that's his his tactic. And I think. Over time, defenders are going to see that a little bit. Tua gets out of the pocket, delivers a nice ball. Not a perfect pass, but that should have been caught. Goes right through the hands of Waddle. But you can see Tua has some athleticism. Despite what you're told, he has some athleticism. And then over here, you see again Little just getting beat inside by the hand game. And then that just happens a little too much. And the pressure's there. Doesn't really affect his bad pass by Tua as the pick. Then you see the pitch outside, and you see the tight end gets jacked up. Hunt falls to the ground. And you only got three guys, really, on four def offensive linemen, five offensive linemen. That was an ugly run block. Inside run here, and you can see Hunt leaning too much, and he's been struggling with that a lot. But you see Tehran and Connor are really a wall. They're the foundation to this this run play, and then Ingold comes in and puts up a good solid block, you know, and then Mostert takes a nice inside cut and picks up a good running run play despite Hunt really whiffing on the uh, backside, on the front side, I should say. And you can see here, you know, Eichenberg is getting driven back, and he does struggle with power, but he's fighting. And he holds up just long. It's a short pass play, though. It's only like two and a half seconds. But I'm trying to find some positives. And then uh, running play inside. And you can see the missed block on the interior. And then Eichenberg with the pull. It's not a terrible block. It's a really great play there by the, de the defender. But he doesn't drive the guy down. And he gets his arm up and knocks Edmonds to the ground. Then you get the pitch outside. Kind of, kind of whiffs a little bit. But it doesn't really matter. You got two on one with Tehran. And it's not going anywhere. This was just a great play call on the defense against the wrong offensive play call. Then you get over here, you know, a little pass, and you can see Connor again struggling a little bit with power. And I don't know why Eichenberg's not helping him. Then little at the bottom getting beat again. You know, Teron, my man Teron, don't need that much help. Eichenberg, help Connor. Then again, take another look, and you see little getting beat, and Eichenberg, uh, Connor getting beat, and Little getting beat. The ball gets off with two is quick release. Little play action. And you can see Eichenberg oversets on the pole block like he does quite often. Just gives inside pressure here very quickly, way too quickly. And that was really a hold. <laughs> and, you know, but look at this. Where are the defenders on the Ravens? We got very lucky on many occasions. Again, Little, the swim, just, just late to arrival and just. The underneath move always beats him. Tua gets it off again, really helping this offensive line out tremendously. Good pass protection here, but there's only two rushers, and this is just 
one amazing pass by Gasecki. Nice throw by two, don't get me wrong, but that's amazing. That's Tua. Uh, Gasecki, who's the late clock guy again. You can see Khan is struggling to power, and he just he's holding and gives up the pressure really quick. But Tua's quick release saves the day. Play action and pretty decent protection, except Little starts going down in late pressure, late clock pressure, and so does Eichenberg. But not terrible. Again, the pass, and Hunt just leans too far in, and Hill and uh, Hunt and Little had too much pressure, and then the, the stunt gets inside, but Tua rolls out and drops the ball off. The good play by Tua. Again, you can see here, just a heavy blitz. The running back can't pick it up. There's just an ugly breakdown on the left side. There's, something wasn't called right. They just didn't see things. And this is that play where Waddle just got pushed out of bounds, but it really started with the bad protection, whether it was call or chemistry or whatever. And uh, again, two is out here. Eichenberg just whiffing, just whiffing. That's like, I don't know what that is. That's not a block. But Tua gets it off. We'll pl- run inside. And you can see Hunt should be eyeing 24 and a th- the tight end should be getting six. But they mix up who they're supposed to block. And it just doesn't go anywhere. Just bad diagnosis, pre-snap diagnosis. See Tua here. He's getting a little bit of pressure inside. Tehran and Connor just giving up a little pressure. But he buys a little time. And does that quick move. And look at that. He's getting sandwiched. And he delivers the ace pass. Big play. All day he was doing this. And that's really not the big plays are on his deal. That should be where his credit comes from. Is what he did with that. He's got good protection here. And then just delivers an ace ball. It should have been caught. Connor losing inside. Getting a swim. He, he's really struggling with the pass protection. Which is surprising. And then two right here. Yoop. That is something. That was a nice play. He rolls out, and he picked up the touchdown. And then on this one, you can see, again, Connor getting driven back. I mean, he's sprawled out, holding for the last second. But Tua delivers a quick release. Uh, you know, it's a little behind, but that might have been caught, but it was very hard to get that. That was a risky area to throw it, really. That was the safest area to throw it. Again, the pass here, and you can see Hunt, he's getting driven back. But he's still fighting enough. He doesn't let enough inside penetration. And Connor and him are able to stem the little stunt they're doing here. And then Tua gets the ball off quick. With, and it should have been caught. Could have been picked, but that wasn't Tua. Again, you see a little stunt on the left side. Outside free release. That's not Tehran's fault. But this is the big TD to Hill. But look at that. That rollout. To, the, your, to his left, and then plant and throw. That was some quick foot movement and quick release. The pat I don't like, but still, that's why the ball is a little short. Look at that. He couldn't even finish his delivery. So they're talking about arm or whatever, but look, it was a little, he was getting a little uh, jimmied at the end of that play, and he was on, on the move. So there was a reason for that to be a little short. Then you get the uh, inside run here, and... Free run inside by Eichenberg, and then Little can't handle his guy. Same names all day. And then over here, you get this. This is what's the free rusher again, and then a double level of zone. And I expect to see a lot of that with Buffalo. That's how you slow this down, pressure. You can't just drop into zones. Pressure them with multi-level uh, zone coverage. And just guard for the rollout because there's going to be lots of rollout. Then again, here you see Eichenberg getting dumped very quickly, just really quickly. And then Tua just gets that ball off. Again, you see the free rusher in here. Connor should have looked to his left, but he doesn't. And that puts two rushers on one blocker. That was Connor's fault. He didn't diagnose properly or the protections weren't called out properly. But look at that catch. That is total trust by Tua and Waddle. What a great pass. And then you get the inside handoff here. And look at 36. This is the, the, the draw. 36, where is he going? He's got two edge defenders, and he just runs the wrong way. This was a total screw-up. One of many, many screw-ups by the Ravens. And that was a huge, that was a dagger play. Then again, here too, with a little slide. And then the rollout. And then the delivery. What a pass. On the move and puts it in the perfect place. And a great catch. All right, so... Eichenberg and Little 
they had some good moments, but for the most part, you could see two was quick release, McDaniel, his play calling, uh, to his ability to move, help from other players, kind of, and also the Ravens just having a terrible game plan, terrible execution, and and for some reason thinking that if we just sit in zones and put little protection up up front, a uh, little pass rush up front, we're gonna win. Tua picked him apart, and he's going to do that. You gotta pressure Tua. You got to. And the Patriots showed that. And the Ravens showed to do the opposite, and it's a loser. So, Eichenberg struggled. He had a couple of good blocks, but for the most part, is that tape that makes you feel comfortable? Little. There were some moments, but is that tape that makes you feel comfortable? And then you add in, add in some other pieces. Tehran, you could see a couple of plays there that you don't see him miss out, but he's got the recovery from the leg. He's got the toe, which is going to be further exasperated against better talent this week. And then you can see Connor. He has some good moments, but he does struggle blocking on his own against Powie. He should get a little help sometimes, but he can't because of this and that. And then Hunt, he's pretty good, but he still has a ways to go to get to that final level. And he's a good player, a decent player, pretty good to decent player, depending. But There's some mistakes in it, and then Little, he's definitely not a winner. Him against Rousseau is is a mismatch. So, I don't know who's playing, who's starting. I don't know if McDaniel's got all the players coming or whatever. But this offensive line is going to set the table for everything. And my personal evaluation is tomorrow it will be abundantly clear Anybody who's watching, it, you know, last week it was all two was just finally broke out. It wasn't that the pressure wasn't just, you know, killing him. It was that he finally figured out how to play the game of football. It's pressure. I, I did some studies on this. We got to spend a lot of time doing a lot of studies about the offense, the defense, matchups, pressure rates, all this stuff to show you that it's a soup. The key soup is pressure. The pressure the defense brings, the pressure the offense resists. So watch this offensive line. If we can get some run game going, because you saw us a few moments where we could get some run game going. We're going to have to get a little run game going because that helps the protection. It helps a lot. So keep your eyes on Eichenberg, Little, and sadly my man, to see how healthy he is. Those three players, if they step if they're playing well, and it's going to be a good day for us. I know Bills fans don't want to hear that, but if you don't get the pressure to us, your secondary is going to get exposed. I personally think the pressure is going to get to us. Is it going to be mitigated enough for us to win? That's the thing I'm waiting to see. So I'm getting nervous already. My son's practicing his, practicing his waddle dance already. And uh, I'm hoping he gets a lot of waddle dances tomorrow. I hope everybody has a good day. It's a football game. I hope we all can come together after this on his channel and kind of just take it for what it is. Bills, good luck. Dolphins, I hope we win. Fans, let's get ready for some good football. Curtis saying, go Fins, you Bill fans. Go Fins. And see you next time. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebread.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.